Dear beautiful people, today I want to talk to you about why for so many of you is it so hard to trust yourself, to trust your own intuition, to trust what you are seeing and to develop faith, if you will, into your own spiritual process and into the development of psychic abilities. Many of you might have heard the term what it means to be gaslit. Well, the term to be gaslit, uh, the action of being gaslit, was popular, popularized by a movie in the 1940s. And in this movie, there was a husband who had psychopathic tendencies. And he was manipulating his wife. In order to control his wife, he wanted to make sure that she doesn't trust herself. So he would change little things in the environment in the house. For example, he would dim the gas light because back then there was still gas lighting. It wasn't all electrical. So he dimmed the gas light and then she would point it out. She would, say, she would, she would be saying, well, isn't it less bright in the room? But he would deny that. He's like, he would say, well, you're making this up. You are, you are imagining this. And more and more she started doubting herself because every time something in the environment changes, she would doubt her own perception because every single time he would doubt her as an act of manipulation. So then she stopped trusting herself. And doesn't that sound familiar to many of us? When we were children... What type of experience did we have? I don't work often with children, but when I do, I'm very surprised what they tell me. That they sometimes have prophetic dreams, that they are of a deep spiritual nature, for example. Or that they have imaginary friends who are actually not that imaginary. Or when they go to bed, that they see a monster under the bed. You all have heard those stories. And what do we do as grown-ups? Because we have been trained by our parents to do that. We walk up to our children and say, well, you're making this up. This ain't real. It's just a dream. Or it's your fantasy going wild. But some of those children, for example, still, because they're not conditioned into the collective mass consciousness, they still have certain abilities before they enter school, for example, before they are overly trained in rational thought. So, for example, they might have astral perceptions. So they might see entities that are not really physically there, but they exist on another frequency band next to the physical experience. So the, mon so the monster under the bed is not a physical entity, but might be, for example, an astral entity that is bothering the child. But in that moment, because we have been teaching our ch we have been told to be scientific, we doubt what our children are saying. They must be insane. But is this really scientific? Isn't to be scientific to be open about a phenomena and to investigate it and not to deny it outright? So not everything that we see is a profound phenomenon, but many of them are. And then there is the question of what is our approach towards it? And many of you in your childhood might have had certain senses. I had clients who were able to read the minds of the people around them when they were children. And because it was too much and because many of the grown-ups were so dysfunctional, they turned their psychic ability off. And many of you have done that. Many of you have turned off your intuitive abilities because of a continuation of trauma in childhood or in school, for example. So then, when you try to gain your abilities back, when you try to restore them to proper function, your ego will revolt. So you will sit in meditation. You try to tune into these abilities and mind you, when you don't use an ability, it, it atrophies. Yeah, it degenerates. So you need to basically re-stimulate the nervous 
the nervous system, like these areas of the nervous system that can pick up on certain frequencies of experience, certain dimensions of experience. So then through meditation, you try to let go of the mind that was the dominant factor in your life because of all the programming and indoctrination you have received in the system. And now you try to let go of that again. But then there is this childhood memory. Every time I was intuitive, every time I was authentic, I was gaslit. My parents or maybe whoever was around me at that time started doubting my, per my perception or my sensory input that I was getting from other frequencies other than the physical realm. So then, as a child, you start doubting yourself and you develop what you could call a lack of confidence. So now you sit in meditation, you try to restore your abilities and suddenly your ego gets very nervous because there is this old trauma of being gaslit. Of, for example, being called a liar or being called crazy. And that disturbed the confidence of the child. Now suddenly your ego is like, well, when if we let those senses back in, what will happen to our friendships? What will happen to our relationships with our parents? What will happen to our relationship to our partner? Who might believe that such experiences are superstition? So this very primal fear in many of you will arise and suddenly your ego will create a lot of mind noise and chatter to fight the, re the restoration of your ability. And this is why many do not develop the patience to restore the psychic abilities, to restore their meditative abilities, to restore, for example, telepathic ways of perceiving information. Because there is this fear, if I do, I'm a, I will be cast out. Or this all fear of my parents are not going to take care of me or they're going to punish me if I start developing those abilities or if I start expressing what I'm seeing under my bed or if I speak about my imaginary friend that is giving me advice which might actually be a, a guide that is there to teach the child certain things about multidimensional reality in a, let's say, child-appropriate way because this is what those guides might specialize in. So we make the child abandon their imaginary friends. Make the child doubt its dreams. And then we have an insecure grown-up who has learned to ignore his or her own intuition, her own psychic sense, her guidance system that links them with their soul consciousness. So when you try restoring it, your ego goes into survival mode and will try anything to stop you from redeveloping that sense that you might have had to some degree as a child. And then you need to make a choice. Do you want to live a life that is limited and confined and where you obey the paradigm? Or do you want to live a life with a great deal of freedom, a great deal of self-expression that can take a rather miraculous form? But... In a way, miracles don't exist, and I will tell you why. Because the supernatural doesn't exist, but the superphysical does. See, the idea of the supernatural comes from people who believe that psychic happen happenings, that multidimensional happenings, happenings are beyond nature, but they are not. They're just another level of nature. So they're not supernatural, but they're superphysical. They're beyond the physical. So basically, when you start developing psychic senses... You are dealing with higher energy physics, which is nature. So it's not unnatural, it's just not developed yet. Or not understood by the collective consciousness yet. So for many of you who, who might not have teachers or be within a spiritual community where you are encouraged to develop such abilities, when you're surrounded by unconscious beings who are either scared of these ideas or who try to, because let's say they put themselves also in a cage, try to put you back in, in a cage, it's very difficult to, live, to develop such consciousness. This is why in the past, for example, in the, in the Buddhist temples and in other mystical schools, the, 
there was a reason why the people left their villages. There was a reason why they left the mass consciousness, entered a school that was isolated from the rest of the environment so, the, so they could detox from the ego belief system so the mind could calm down and they could start developing such abilities. And for someone who tries to develop them, they need a great patience. They need to repeat certain exercises over and over and over. Now, this is where many of you get lazy. But do you really get lazy? Well, often it is more a loss of motivation than a laziness. And the loss of motivation comes from the lack of confidence because of being gaslit as a child. So if you don't have immediate re results, the ego starts doubting you. So you hear a voice in the head, what am I doing? This is nonsense. Why am I staring at, at the uh, tip of a candle flame, for example, to be able to tune into higher energies? Why, why am I doing this? I've done this for 10 times now, nothing happens. Then you, then you develop self-doubt, which seed was planted in your childhood, and you stop the practice. You abort it before you could restore your abilities. And this is how many of you fall by the wayside. Because you're not being encouraged by your environment to continuously do this. While in the East, in a, in a temple, in, a, in some sort of mystical school, you would be encouraged to do this over, over several years. Now, this is where it is about self-acceptance. Are you willing to accept yourself to such a degree that that level of freedom is attractive to you? Can you allow yourself not to be intimidated by the collective consciousness? And can you allow yourself not to be intimidated by the fear of energy virus, if you will, that exists in your brain or in your energy field that you experience as your ego? Are you willing to go beyond fear to experience a life that is multidimensional, where you don't have to be confined to a limited set of probabilities. Now, in a way, you could see this as a, as a rhetorical question. Of course, often we would say we choose freedom, right? We would say we choose an expanded life, a creative life, an authentic life. But truth is, many get very, very scared when they actually start developing that psychic sense. And they rather pick their ego and their ego starts fighting their own energy. They create a psychosis or form of schizophrenia to avoid being real with people. They rather tell them that they have psychosis. They rather tell them that they have schizophrenia than being honest and say, well, I'm a medium. Or I have a psychic sense. Or I'm a visionary. Now, this is where you, if you want to, if you want to really understand it, you need to go deep within yourself to see what are the energy blockages, what are the fears that you don't develop the, dis the, the discipline to really enable yourself to restore the psychic senses and even evolve them further. Because this will take a lot of time and patience. Contemplate about that, my friends. Be well. <laughs>